Yep, it's beautiful. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to go through this PowerPoint that I put together to show you. These butterflies pictures you're seeing are pretty much exclusive to Oak Point. Um, the location of Oak Point is about 10 miles south of Cass Lake and in between Cass Lake and Walker. Um, this is a very unique place. I hope that someday you'll get a chance to come down to the point and um, check it out. Um, be mindful that these species are not all living at one time. They, we start getting butterflies in the spring and they go until November if the weather's good. So um, here's my opening slide and let's, I will get started. Um, okay, so guess what? It's not moving to the next slide. Yep, go ahead and click it a couple of times. It needs to realize that you're trying to move it. Still not clicking. I've requested remote control to be able to help. Oh, Oops, I just hit approve. Yep. Okay. Ah ha ha. Now I'll be able to. Oh, now you're controlling me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in control. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure why that did that. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, I guess, okay. Okay, so are you gonna go to the next slide? Nope, I've given it back to you. Oh, okay, let's see if it works now. Oh, now it works, thank you. Okay, um, just to start out a little bit, yeah, I've been um, looking at butterflies my whole life. And because of the fact that when I was a child, I would catch butterflies with my fingers because I didn't have a net. Um, I have used that um, in my research. And because I was studying them when I was a little girl, um, I just have, um, I have the insight, like inside myself, I know what species, how they act, I know where their habitats are and such. So it's kind of been an asset to me. Um, I did, did want to share with you quickly as we start here that I have compiled um, a checklist which I had submitted to the um, Chippewa National Forest. This is a handy guide that people can use and I'm handing them out all over the place. And the book that I'm referencing as I'm doing my research is called Butterflies of the Northwoods. And this is what it looks like. The author is Larry Weber. He's located in Duluth. And this is a fantastic book. If you are a scientist and you want to be looking at butterflies, like I had the opportunity to take Erica with me this summer, um, you can get your book Spiral Bound, which I got Spiral Bound at, um, at Office Max. Okay, so let's just, oh, I, I figured this out that I have, um, I have, I have driven approximately 17,500 miles in the past 10 years up and down Oak Point. So I thought, wow, what a way to start this presentation. Okay, my objectives for uh, my research is to find all the species of butterflies and skippers that are um, living not only on Oak Point, but in the Northwoods. But it turned out that I spend most of my time on um, Oak Point. There's just a few species that I have gone other places in Beltrami to look for. Um, I, I've been um, looking at these species every single year um, and collecting the data. In fact, I have a copy of my summary. This is my summary for 2020. I just got it printed. Um, the other day, and it's been um, submitted to the National the uh, Lepidoptera Society. Um, part of my objectives is to collect and report the species populations, um, the fluctuations in their habitat, the threats, and what we can do to protect them. Okay, so I thought it would be good at the beginning to tell you how I go about doing this research. I, I, I literally go out every single day that is a good day, unless it's really raining and really super cold, I won't go. But other than that, I'm out every day of the summer. I go to seven sites. Uh, at the beginning, I write down the date. I put the mileage of my car. I put down the temperature, the wind speed. Um, is it sunny or cloudy? I put the location of each site as I go along. Um, when I get out of my car, I walk slowly and I observe everything. And uh, the main thing is I have my camera and I take photos of everything. And my camera is time and date stamped, which is really good. Um, if I see any other strange things going on, like if there's um, a dragonfly hatch or something, I write those things down. 
Oh, by the way. Okay, so this is the first butterfly that you might see this weekend. This is called the spring azure, um, and they're one of the first butterflies to appear. Um, as, as spring starts, I'm, I know where to go and what to look for. Um, anywhere that there are blueberries, blueberry plants on Oak Point, you'll find the, um, the eastern pine elfin and the hoary elfin. Uh, they're getting ready to pollinate the blueberries, uh, and they're, they're located pretty close to the trails. So, Excuse me. So I'm always careful of, of not just damaging or destroying their habitat. Um, along with the, the um, blueberries coming into blossom, the wild strawberries and the rock crests are very important um, parts of the habitat on Oak Point. And the spring butterflies, um, you know, that's what they feed on. And most of these uh, individuals are close to the edges of the roads. This is a western tail blue, which is very rare to see. I only know one place on Oak Point that it is living, and it also is close to a, a road, and um, it, it likes to feed on strawberry plants. Um, lately, we've been having cold late springs, and maybe this weekend will um, that will change, but it's been uh, difficult times for the pollinators on Oak Point and around the area. Be when we have a late spring, then we don't have um, food for them because this, the wildflowers aren't blooming. And uh, a lot of the species are depending upon dandelions for their food. Um, these two individual pictures uh, were taken um, pretty close to the edge of the road um, where the dandelions, you know, where they were growing in great numbers. Okay, um, the comma family, it's um, pretty, ex Pretty exciting to see a green comma. I know Erica sent me a picture one time. She saw a green comma up in the boundary waters. And um, commas are, they, their habitat is around birch trees. And then they like to bask on dry, sandy areas. As you can see, this is a sandy road. Um, one of my concerns about Oak Point is that um, the butterfly species, they depend on these road edges for their food and for their well-being, like when they get cold, like this green comma, it was just basking in the sun to get warm. And what happens is cars come along and of course, you know, then they get killed. But, um, but the thing is, there's not a lot of population on Oak Point, so that's really helping. Okay, so I thought you might want to look at the three other three commas that we are really lucky to have on Oak Point, the, um, the eastern the eastern comma, the question mark in the middle, and the gray comma. The question mark in the middle of this picture is a huge butterfly. And when you see it, it's just like, wow, I'm seeing a question mark. Um, these question marks, they like lay their eggs around birch trees. They like to feed on sap. You, you rarely see them on a flower. Sometimes I'll see them on oxized daisies, but um, they're pretty much, they like to feed on sap. In spring, you know, one of the first things that happens too is when we get through the month of April is the Canadian swallows show up. And it's always a concern to me because uh, they have a low flight um, elevation. And so a lot of them get destroyed by cars. So if you see them in Bemidji, well, you'll see a lot of them on the road because of, you know, because of that. But um, if you're lucky enough to come out to Oak Point during when they first come out, um, it's so cool to see them puddling like this. And these are the males and they're trying to look for a female and you can go up and down Oak Point. And I know three or four places where sometimes you can see like 30, 40, 50 of these swallows. In the past couple of years, the population has gone down. And I don't know if that's because of the cold or if that's because so many of them get hit by the cars so that they can't reproduce. Okay, and this is just a beautiful female. They like to feast on anything they can, anything that they can access in the spring. And with the late springs, um, they've been I've been finding them on dandelions. And then this is a lilac bush in my yard um, that they they'll come to. Okay, then we have butterflies that are, exist in the grasses, and so it concerns me like when the mowers come and they cut the grasses because some of the species rely on the grasses for their whole habitat. This is a common ringlet and it's a beautiful little butterfly and it has a really weird flight pattern and you don't see them very often. And it took me 10 years to get this picture of one with its wings open, which I got last summer. But um, yeah, it spends its, its times in the grasses. So if you're not taking a walk to look for it, you wouldn't see it. 
Okay. The Milbert's tortoise shell um, is also on Oak Point. And as you can see here, it's feasting on a wild flower. These wild flowers, this happens to be in my yard, but they're up and down the driveways, they're on the road edges. So if mowers come through, they're, they're mowing down this food. Um, I'm excited to tell you about this Appalachian Brown. For, the, for like eight years, I was driving to um, Bemidji State Park looking for this butterfly, and there are some there, and I didn't even realize it, that they were in my own yard. And um, two years ago, I, I was just so excited that they were in my yard, and this one here, I found this one last summer. Um, it also exists in a grassy a swampy area. Um, I have no doubts now that the Appalachian um, is also in other places on Oak Point um, where there are grasses and swamp and I'll be looking for that this summer. Um, the other members of the, eyed, of the brown family are the eyed brown, the northern prulei. All these species, as you can tell, they like to be by leaves, green grass, they're low flying, um, they're not quick to get up and leave. So if there's if there's a mower coming along, um, a lot of these species will, um, will not make it through that episode. Um, this eyed brown is, I just thought it was so beautiful. This picture was taken at the, at the Oak Point Swamp. Um, and you'll see coming up where I got concerned one day because the mowers came and they were, they were going three, three swipes deep on, on the, the side of the road. And this whole area where this eye brown was, was totally mowed. Um, the last brown I wanted to show you was the little wood satyr and or satyr. And this is a really pretty little fellow and you can find it at the edges of the forest. So I'm not too concerned about this one, um, what's going on with its habitat on Oak Point. And um, it's just fun to, to find these. Okay, white admirals are, are also in our neighborhood and they're beautiful, but I've seen the populations go way down. There used to be like 50, 60 of them at the end of driveways, and now they're not. And I'm, I'm, I keep thinking, is this because the mowing was done or did they get affected by cold weather? I'm not quite sure, but I'll be, I'm interested to see this summer how the white admirals um, come along in their population. Okay. Um, this is a red admiral and this is a migrant butterfly. So they may not be born here in this area, um, but they do fly through. Um, I wanted to tell you that Oak Point is really strategically in a really cool place because it's a point into Leech Lake. And so if there's butter, butterflies migrating from the south, all they have to do is to come through Walker and cross the narrows and they're on Oak Point. So I think that's why there's, we're getting, I'm seeing species that are coming from the south more likely than I would in other areas. Okay, like this one, the common buckeye. It's not from our, it's not from our region, it comes from the south. And a lot of times I'm finding it on Oak Point Road, like it crossed the narrows and it just made its way up the road, um, feeding on um, clover, it loves clover, and also that, uh, that yellow trefoil bird's foot flower. Um, when you see a buckeye, it's so cool. This, these are two, two, actually two different individuals. The one on the clover I found in my yard last summer and I was just thrilled. I'm like, oh my gosh, a buckeye is here. And then this, the one on the right, I, on the dog bane, I found that one, um, on 4th of July, I went out on 4th of July and it was on the dog bane. Um, I, and I put that one in there because I wanted you to understand too that the dog bane is a really important habitat um, feeder for the butterflies. And this this summer, I, I was just having so much fun. I would go to this one area where the dog bane was and I'm not kidding you, there would be like 60 Atlantis fritillaries and like just tons of other species, but it was just like a wild frenzy butterfly party. And then one day I got up to go to look and some mowers had come and cut back more than half the dog bane. And my heart just sunk that they came through and, um, you know, they came through and mowed that. Um, we, we also have the Eastern tailed blues. And because, because of the fact that Oak Point has less human population, we do have clover, um, that get, doesn't get disrupted. And there's this one place, if you get a chance on the corner of Oak and East Oak Point, 
just go there and just check it out because there's so much clover on that corner that when you get out of your car, you can smell it. Like, like I want some clover perfume. It is like the prettiest smell. And you can find um, Eastern tail blues there and all different species on that corner. Um, in the spring, we have mustard whites up and down Oak Point. They tend to be in the driveways and I'm not too concerned about their populations because they stay away from the road, the road where any, uh, any mowing is going on, but they're beautiful. They're just pure white. Uh, and then we have the, the, the hair streaks and the hair streaks, they like to feed on milkweed and the brown eyed Susans and sweet clover. And if you take a ride down the road, there's sweet clover growing down by the swamp and well, actually by any of the swamp areas on this road and um, really close to the road. Uh, like one foot from the road, these, this is where this food is and this is where these butterflies are. There are not a lot of hair streaks or coral hair streaks, although we are having um, a fluctuation of Acadians, which I'll show you a picture coming up with. that's really super. Okay, the metal fritillaries, um, they are going up and down these strips where mowing is going on. Uh, they fly low, um, they don't fly fast, so they went be able to escape um, when that was happening and that would lower their populations. Currently I'm looking for them on two trails um, and I'm doing a research project because take a good look at this. This is a metal fertility, a normal one. Now look at this. Okay, I'm sorry it's a little blurry, but that's the only picture I got. But this is an aberration of a metal fertility, which led me to begin a research on the fertilities and realizing that this whole brood was off that um, that they're not they weren't the right color that something happened and so I notified some other scientists and I started doing a study which I will hope to um, complete at the end of this summer and I'm hoping that we'll see some more color changes to prove that maybe that they're changing um, and I just threw this in because I thought you would like to see that's what a metal fit looks like when it closes its wings it's it's so pretty. Okay, this is another migrant um, and these variegated fertilities, um, I'm seeing them every year and I go to other places now and then and I don't see variegated fertilities and I'm pretty excited for it. Um, they are coming, I believe, across the Narrows and up into Oak Point. Um, they're feeding on anything that they can eat. I've, I've photographed them on dogbane, on lilac bushes, um, it's just a beautiful, it's a very shy butterfly. It flies really low. So if anything got in its way, uh, it would, it would probably not make it. Okay. Um, and then the great spangles. And as you can see, you know, it's on milkweed. Um, I, I think a lot of people relate milkweed to monarchs, but there are a lot of species that eat on milkweed besides monarchs and the great spangled is one of them. And as you can see, the Acadian uh, hair streaks also love um, to feed on milkweed. And this is an interesting picture because this, this milkweed plant, there's only maybe two or three plants in a little tiny area that not far from the road. And I'm seeing this like four years in a row now that all these Acadians are coming to this one plant. And then like two weeks later, the plant was mowed down. So that, that just concerns me. And I'll be talking to somebody about that area to see if we can um, rope it off for next year so that this plant doesn't get um, destroyed. Um, and along with that, of course, the caterpillars are utilizing the milkweed um, to go through their stages. Um, and now and then you can see silver border fritillaries. They're very rare on the point. Um, I see them in my yard because we have a swamp in our front yard. I also, this photo here I know was taken down by the swamp area in the grasses. And shortly after this picture was taken, all those grasses were mowed down. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to make sure we had an oxide daisy in here because I know it's an invasive species, but what I'm observing all over the point and other places in my observations is that um, the oxide daisy is becoming a main food source for many species. And I, I'm, I'm thinking it's because of the fact that, you know, they are invasive because they're there and the species can count on them, but they are um, leaning towards, you know, feeding on them all the time. Okay, and then to your right, there's an, uh, I believe that's an Atlantis, and that's a wildflower that it's feeding on. 
Okay, I'm ha happy to see there's Aphrodite fritillaries also um, on Oak Point. I only know one place to find them and they do, they're landing on this sandy trail all the time. Two years ago, I counted like numerous, like 30 of them in one day, but in the last two years, um, their population has gone down and I'm not sure um, why that's happening to them. Okay, along with um, that, okay, the morning cloaks, which um, you should be starting to see a morning cloak in Comptons. These are the first two species that come out in the spring and um, they're beautiful. Uh, the reason we see them so quickly is because they just hibernate in the winter and a lot of them like to go in garages um, into little, into shingles, you know, they find little nooks and crannies in trees. And so they'll be coming out shortly here. Maybe you'll see one this weekend and then they'll mate and there'll be another, there'll be a brood in the summertime. Um, I don't, I see morning cloaks on the road all the time. Comptons, not so much. I see them more in yards. So um, I don't, I haven't seen any Comptons getting hit by cars. Uh, they also, they like to be around birch trees and aspen. And of course, here's a monarch. Blazing Star is an important food source. Uh, there is some in this locality, but um, that it concerns me sometimes because cars are running over. And I don't know if this is legal or not, but sometimes I take my shovel and I dig up the Blazing Star that the cars are running over and, I, and then I plant it six feet back where it can't get mowed over and it can uh, keep growing. Um, just trying to keep the food in the area for the butterflies. Um, now and then I see a viceroy. Uh, I see them by the swamps. They're feeding on joe pie and sometimes on a, I'll find them on milkweed and they like to hang around willow trees. Um, then we have painted ladies which um, have been fluctuating in their population and about four years ago there was thousands of them all over the state of Minnesota. It was just unbelievable. They were just we just had this huge emergence of painted ladies and not so much in the last two years. I thought maybe after that happened, there'd be more, but there hasn't been. Um, I don't see very many of these on the roadside. They're mostly in the gardens and they, in the fall, they, they'll feed on anything because they're so hungry. And um, in my yard, I have zinnias and they go crazy on the zinnias. Um, and then I, this is a picture of them with their wings closed that I always thought was a cool picture in my yard. Um, so. Okay, so then we have the American lady. I'm not seeing any of these on the, pretty much on the roadside. They're just in yards. Now and then you'll see them on the blazing star and the thistle, but they tend to not be as much on, on the roadsides. Um, the harvester is really an awesome species that you can see on Oak Point. The only other place I've seen this butterfly is up at the big bog. And it's the only carnivorous butterfly in North America. It's very small. If you're taking a walk and all of a sudden you feel like there's a, a bug going around you like a tornado or you think it's a moth, it's not, it's a harvester. And if you just hold still, it'll land on you. And for years and years, I never ever saw a harvester open up its wings. And then one year it happened and I was so excited. And this was right on the side of the road on Oak Point where um, I was riding my bike and it started going around me like a tornado and I stopped and it opened up its wings and I got this picture. Okay, we do have sulfurs, of course, that's kind of a mainstay butterfly. We see them everywhere. Um, I was happy to get this picture on the left because you can't, they never open their wings. You have to get their picture while they're taking off. But I have seen, um, a population decline of them on Oak Point. And I do believe it's because of the mowing because um, that's basically where the sulfurs are. And if, you know, so if the mower comes through, then, then they're destroyed. So I know I wanted to show you, these are the species, um, some of the species that are now missing. I've been keeping track of the black swallows carefully because I think they're so beautiful. And I'm sad to tell you that last year, I didn't see one black swallow. And I'm out every day, I'm looking, I know where I've seen them before. On the left, you can see the female, she'll hold still so you can take a picture, but it's harder to take a picture of the male on the right because they're just constantly moving. Um, I, I, did, I did get a picture of a photo of two of them mating three years ago. And the areas where I'm seeing them are down by the swamps and on the corner of Oak and East Oak and actually in my yard, but um, it's been less and less. And 
the place where I saw the mating is where I was upset where they were starting to do a lot of the mowing. Um, anyway, so I hope that they are somewhere on the point. Um, I'm going to actually spread some dill seeds around. I'm going to go to the Oak Point residents and ask them to grow some dill. I've ordered some dill seeds and because they like their caterpillars like to feed on dill. So um, I'm going to instigate that. In the bottom, you see a, bo a bog hopper. Um, the bog hopper, I took that picture and it was so beautiful and I was going to see that butterfly. And then the mowers came and, and mowed down that whole habitat. And that was like six years ago and I haven't seen them since. So I think I think they got destroyed, wiped out that day by the mowers. The American coppers are few and far between. Um, they're also uh, coming out of the swamps and they're small and they're on the roadsides. So um, they're not, you know, they're not doing well either. I haven't seen one. I found one in my yard. I couldn't believe that like three years ago, but otherwise I haven't seen one. The Harris's checker spots. I also used to be able to see them um, on Oak Point Road in the grassy areas. That's where I first found one was just resting on some grass and I haven't been able to find them either. Okay, these are some other species that are now missing on Oak Point. Um, the Western Whites uh, were on Oak Point for two years and they're beautiful. I actually found them in three locations. So I was thinking, wow, this would be cool. And then the next year they were gone. I'm like, why are they gone? But the areas I was finding them again were in the, in the road areas where the mowing was going on. To, to the upper right, you can see a gray hair streak. And I only found it one year and out of 10 years and I haven't been able to locate it again. Uh, in, the, in the bottom left, you see a common wood nymph. I did see one last year, but the populations are way down. The wood nymph lives in open meadow areas. So it was the, uh, the places I was always seeing it was in the Oak Point areas, you know, just the roadside and back about a hundred feet. And the population of that, like I said, I saw one last year. The striped hair streak, boy, would I like to see one of those again. Um, it's, they're just gone. I, I've looked and looked. I've, I keep going back to that site every year on Oak Point and I can't find any striped hair streaks. The common checkered skipper, I saw one two years ago. It strictly is on the roadside, although one day it was in my yard and we do have a swamp, but I was shocked to find it in my yard, but um, I haven't been able to locate that one either. Okay, so what do we do to protect the environments? Um, last year, I kid you not, I pretty much almost put my car in front of a mower. <laughs> he wasn't too happy with me, but I was just a little bit upset because usually they mow back like one swipe and then they were mowing back two, two times around and it looked like they were gonna mow three times. And pretty much when I talked to the gentleman, it sounded like they were gonna mow all the way back to the tree line. And if you mow from the road to the tree line, you pretty much take away all the butterfly habitat and any caterpillars that were there, adult individuals, anything that's there would just be destroyed. So um, uh, I went to the D DRM and they were very nice to give me these green poles and I actually protected this area. I, I was really surprised last year because I found a Dorcas copper right here. And in 10 years, I've never seen one on Oak Point. I always go to other places to look for them, like up to the big bog and they're right here. And then if you look on the other side of that water, I got out my binoculars and I realized that there was sink foil there. So I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, they love to be on sink foil. So I just haven't seen them. They're such a tiny butterfly. Okay, so just to make a point, I put I put this up, this caution, and then I put a sign there saying rare species protection from mowing. And on the right here, you can see this list and I'm not gonna read them all off, but just sitting and thinking, these are all the species that I have taken photos of in this very spot. Okay, and it's not that large of a, of a place. I mean, it's it's the it's the swamp. It's, I don't know, maybe a football field long on each side. But when I count it up, after I put these names on here, there's 18 species that I have taken pictures of right here, including the rare variegated uh, fritillary um, and the bronze copper. So, um, so this place is really important. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to put this um, signage up here again this spring. So this won't be, this habitat won't be um, destroyed. 
Um, th this brown co bronze copper, it, it's one of the butterflies that you will see there um, where I put the signs up. And um, it usually has a, a, a brood in September. And so every year, like when the frost is coming, I'm stopping there and looking. And I looked and looked this year and I was really disappointed that I didn't see any of the last brood and they had come through and more the one time and then I put the signs up and I'm like, okay, were they destroyed? I don't know. I'll find that out this spring or summer when the first um, brood comes along. This happens to be a male, what that one looks like when it opens its wings up. This is the male bronze copper. It's a very tiny butterfly. Okay, um, there are other habitats on Oak Point that I, I keep looking. Um, these three photos are pictures that I have gotten up at the Big Bog. Um, the, uh, in the lower left, the Freedia fritillary, it, um, it comes to my shoes because I have salt on my shoes, but it's a rare butterfly to see um, that one. And then the Judda Arctic, that's also up at the Big Bog and the Red Dis Alpine. These three butterflies should be on Oak Point. There is um, uh, black spruce trees, there's cotton, what do you call the cotton flower? Okay, I see the habitat. I don't have a way to get into it. Like in the big bog, they have the bog walk and then you can go out there and you know you can look. Um, so I don't have a way to get into the bog. So if anybody has any ideas of how I can get into the bog safely so I can see if these species are there. And by the way, the Judd Arctic never opens its wings. Never. I mean, in 10 years, I never saw it. And this photo I got, um, I kid you not, it landed next to my camera case. And I took, I focused on it. And I was taking a picture of it just sitting there next to my camera case. I took a picture, it opened its wings, and then it closed its wings and it flew off. I mean, I took two, two or three pictures in a row and I got it. Okay, and the, and the red disc alpine, it doesn't like its picture taken either. So that picture is blurry because I also, I actually took it while it was flying. Okay, that's an in-flight photo. Okay, so in conclusion, um, after 17,500 miles of research over 10 years of Oak Point and going out there almost every single day, I just feel like we have such a treasure and I didn't even put the skippers in here because I, I was afraid this presentation would get too long. But Oak Point has a low human population, yet we're losing species. species. And as you can see, eight species have disappeared in the past 10 years. Um, all, even though in the summer of last summer in 2020, I found two new species, the Dorcas copper and the salt and pepper skipper. But um, I'm really, I really feel like the reason we're losing these species is because when the mowers come through, they just destroy everything in their path. And it was okay for me when they were doing one swipe, but when you start going at it two and three swipes, and certainly I just about panicked when I was thinking, Are you, what, you're gonna cut back to the tree line? Please don't do that because you don't realize what you what's living here. Um, so future prevention and loss of species, um, that was why I wanted to give this presentation. I, I want to make sure that the, um, the, that the tribe and the tribal college, the Triple National Forest, the city of Cass Lake, um, everybody who has anything to do with coming out to Cass Lake and working on that environment understands and we come to an, come to an agreement on how much mowing they're going to do so that we can keep this treasure. Because um, I truly believe that that is why some of these butterflies are disappearing. So with that, um, do you guys have any questions or? Um... Wow, thank you so much, Allison. That was fantastic. And boy, do we have questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First one is, uh, what is the difference between butterflies and skippers? Okay, so a butterfly... Um, Okay, a butterfly has a certain flight pattern and it, its body shape is different. And a skipper is very small and it does just that. Instead of flying like in flight like a butterfly, it skips from flower to flower. And really, you can't go out and say, oh, I'm going to get pictures of skippers today because it, it'll never happen. If you are focused on a butterfly on a flower, a skipper might fall onto the jump, skip onto the flower, and you can take its picture. Um, and some of them, at the end of the day, you could see them basking in the sun to get warmth and before uh, before they go to bed at night. 
and I was just going to turn here to a page in the book here. I should have, yeah, I probably should have put some skippers in, but um, okay, the Arctic skipper is really pretty, and I, I just love when I can see that. Let me see if I can find it in my book. So the skipper is like, here's one. See Would you stop here? sharing your screen so we can see you a little bit bigger? Okay, I'll say stop share. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, so see the skipper? That's a skipper. Okay, and I'll show you um, an Arctic. The Arctic skippers look like little miniature butterflies. Here, Arctic skippers are really cool. cool. Okay, they're really tiny, and the Arctic skipper will stay around for you to get a picture, but most of the other ones won't. Like, this is the one that I, I can't find recently. See? So, see how their bodies are kind of chunky? They're smaller. Thank okay. you. Next question Have you seen an overall population decline in? butterflies. I mean, we know specific species, but in general, are you seeing less butterflies over the 10 years? Okay, I would, I would have to say yes. I would say that the year 2020 was, was like this huge butterfly year. And then every year it's different. But um, there's just a few species that are going crazy, like the Atlantis fritillary. Um, you can find tons of them on the dog bane, but overall, I would have to say, yes, I'm seeing a decline in species on Oak Point. Thank you. Um, we had a couple of questions about the commas. And first is, where are they named after punctuation, like question mark or comma? I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why. Somebody along the line, well, oh, I know why. Duh. Okay. When, and I should have put that slide in there when I think about it, but when the comma butterflies close their wings, each comma has a different marking on the back of its wings. And then let me quick find my page here. And you can tell which comma you're looking at by the back of the wings. So in this book, it's on page 128, 137. Okay, I'll get it. I can get you a picture really quick here. Okay, so when, if you're not sure which comma you're looking at, you need to take a picture of it with its wings open and when its wings closed. And they're not really people friendly, like white admirals love to get their pictures taken, but commas aren't people friendly. So you have to like zoom on them. Okay, so here's a gray comma. Okay, see right here, there's a comma. Well, on this one, there's a little check mark. Okay, so there's a check mark. And then on each species, there's a different mark. So the, the question mark one, it actually looks like a question mark on the back of the wings. <laughs> okay, so each one of the of those species in that family has a different marking on the back that you have to look for. And sometimes I can't tell apart. I'm like, okay, is this an Eastern or a gray? I really need a picture of the back of its wings. And then you have to try to get them to cooperate. <laughs> So we have a com uh, question about those as well. Do they only eat sap when flowers aren't available or do they eat sap the whole season? Uh, the commas? Okay, the commas, the commas. I, I see them in both places. Um, it all depends if you have a tree that's sappy that you can actually look at. I have one at the end of a driveway that I go to look at that I know there'll be sap, but I probably have to say I see commas mostly on the roadside and when we have a good year and when there's a day when the commas emerge from their chrysalises, you leave your driveway and like every 50 feet while you're driving, you see a comma fly up and it's really cool. Then you like stop your car, like, oh my God, look at all these commas. And you stop and like, okay, are they grays? Are they Easterns? Um, rarely are they question marks. I don't see the question marks very often, but again, all these, I see them they're by the side of the road. They're all in the gravel by the side of the road with their wings open, basking in the sun. Okay, let's see if I can combine a few questions here. We've got several about mowing. For the mowing, what does three stripes mean? And is there a level of maintenance cutting that would be you know, acceptable? Or is it your stance that we should just stop mowing them all together? Okay, so... Uh, I, I guess you didn't hear my word. I was saying swiping. Like when they come by, like they, they go around one time, I was calling that a swipe, okay? So if they come around one time, they mow the first, what is it? The first six feet, okay? That's okay with me. They, they do that, then that's okay. And, and, you know, nature needs to have, have things cut back now and then. I mean, that's just part of nature, okay? And then if they come around the second time, I'm okay with that. 
okay, to a certain point, because some of the flowers only grow in the first swipe, in the first area where they're mowing, okay, but I know they have to do that now and then, but it, it's, my thoughts are like, don't do it three times, don't come around three times, and please don't say that, oh, we're going to mow this whole area back to the trees, and I think to myself, why? Why do they have to do that? Okay, there's there's hardly any people out there. I mean, this is the country. It's not a city. Why do we have to mow down all this stuff? Okay, so a couple times around is fine, but mowing back to the tree line is destroying these butterflies. Do you think that spraying or other types of pollution might be affecting butterflies? Um, of course it could be. And you know, one of the things I'm wondering is like, okay, and I don't know how all these things work, but like, are people spraying thistle? Does the county come out and spray thistle to get rid of it? Because there used to be more thistle on oak line. And I'm telling you that a lot of these species are feeding on the thistle and especially the black swallow. So I'm thinking, okay, what happened to the black swallow? Did they get sprayed or is it because the thistle is declining, so I'm not seeing them? Okay, so um, yeah, spraying I don't see as a healthy thing to the butterflies either. Um, Joe says that MnDOT has mowing restrictions by statute, no mowing beyond the top eight feet until August 31st. Could the band township or county enact the same? Yeah, you know what? Okay, if that's what it's supposed to be, that is not what was happening. They were they were going to town mowing. I actually pulled my car up in front of the mower and he was not happy with me. And I had to call his boss. And, and then I waited there and his boss drove from Cass Lake to talk to me. Who, who, who's, who is he? Who are you stopping with your vehicle? I stopped the, the gentleman who had the big mowing machine and he was going around Oh, point. Well, and then you said you called Cass Lake. Who, who in Cass Lake did you call? Um, she's right off the second. I don't know his name, but he he called into Cass Lake and he said, "I have this woman out here, and she's upset about the mowing." And then he drove out there, and I believe it was a white truck. He he came out there to talk to me. Well, I'm Amy Burnett. I'm the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer, and the tribe has the last authority within the reservation boundaries over MnDOT, over any other entity, over Chippewa National Forest. And like <laughs> to even talk about like state laws or anything like that is like, it doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. you, you're talking about, you're living within the reservation. Right. So you might not be aware of it, but like we hold the last authority for what you're seeing going on. Um, so <laughs> we're not going to stop mowing because it's our, for the safety of our people, for our tribal members. Um, but I'm really interested in what you're seeing in hearing your presentation today. Um, I think that we can work to improve uh, mowing techniques, but I don't agree that you should be stopping our people from doing their job. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, like I said, I'm 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 fine with mowing, but it doesn't have doesn't have to be so extensive. I mean, it it never was extensive, and then all of a sudden it started happening, and that's why I stopped the mower. I'm like, how far are you going to mow? I mean, I, then I was getting upset, especially around the swamp area where all, all those multiple species are. So like two times around, that's okay. And that, that's pretty, that goes down pretty far, but to have to mow to the tree line, which is like a football field away, there's really no reason to, to mow that down when it's just metal. It's not very deep, so it's not like there's there's not like there's deer hiding there that you wouldn't see. I mean, I live on Oak Point, and so I want to be careful with my life too, with the, with nature and everything. But but it doesn't need to be mowed extensively like that and destroying all these species. So, but thank you so much for for um, introducing yourself and talking to me. Yeah, I'd like to say something. Um, my yep. name is Matt Connor, and I'm with the. Uh, I'm the director of transportation. So I'm aware of, of what's going on at Oak Point. 
I'm aware of the incident that happened last year. Um, I'm, I was the one that you can you talk to, and I was the one that sent my maintenance supervisor out there to. Oh, okay. Um, and we did accommodate you last year in that one area where we, where we're going to mow to the tree line. Um, due to because we we wanted it fenced off, so we we accommodated that. Um, the reason why we cut to the tree line is just for the safety of the public. Um, I know we weren't we weren't doing that before, but uh, that was just something that we were we were doing in certain areas on that on that particular road. Okay, so so yeah, so so you're saying that you're not going to do it like in all areas. You were just doing it in certain spots. Well, yeah, you know, I got we got a lot of other roads to maintain, and if we were going to do two swipes, we'd be we'd be mowing that area quite quite more often than we we'd be able to uh, go around the reservation on other other roads that need the mowing also. So, yeah, you know, we, we got certain areas where we're going to cut at, and then we move on to the next area. And I thank you very much for allowing me to put those poles up and, but, you know, even in the swamp area, like, okay, I put those poles up in that one spot, but it was mowed across the street way down to where the swamp starts, like, like all the food for the, for the coppers, for the Dorcas coppers and for the eyed browns. I mean, it was their whole habitat was just taken away. The sweet clover was all mowed down. The mower went right down to where the swamp starts. So I was stood there, I just about started crying. I'm like, okay, they're gone. The, the coppers are now, they're destroyed. So can, does it not have to be like right down to where the swamp starts? Can it just be two feet well, from where the swamp starts? I know, I know in some of the areas where the swamps are, uh, we, have to cut, we have to cut some of that grass so we can get there to uh, maintain the culvert so they stay open because there's a culvert that runs between both sides of the road that, that accommodate both sides of the swamp. Okay. Uh, this is Amy again. I'm going to just interject here as a representative for the DRM in particular that like those things that the reservation decides to do is not a conversation for today, but I've really enjoyed you know, like the information that you have. And I think that there are other conversations outside of this forum where that could be better approached. Thank like you. today, those decisions are not going to be decided. I would you like to return to some student questions if that is all right. Okay, can I just say one thing though? I think that would be good. Why don't we why don't we have a meeting? Can we sit and talk about some of the areas so that we can maybe make some accommodations and and then I understand what you guys are doing and we can all have an agreement on it. One of the yeah, students I'd be gladly to sit down with you and set something up. Okay, so I'd like to stop this part of the conversation. Okay. One of the students has asked, do you ever go in further into the woods to look for the butterflies? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> in fact, my neighbors, I get teased a lot. They're like, they really think I should have a gun with me because, you know, I mean, one time I was looking at and I heard a noise and there was a bear walking behind me. And, you know, I was so, I was so infatuated with taking photos of this one butterfly that I wasn't looking behind me. Um, I used to drive down some of the trails out there and then and then drive out. Now I leave my car on the roadside. So if you see my blue car, it says quartz seven. Then I figure if I'm way in the woods and I get hurt, then at least somebody can know where to find me when I get hurt. <laughs> okay, but yes, I do. I go, I, I don't just do the roadsides. I go way in, I'm looking all over the place. What can we do or not do with our own yards to enhance butterfly populations? Wow, you can be so friendly to the pollinators. Like, you know, plant, get some milkweed and just plant it in your yard. Um, some of the, and some of the uh, flowers that you can get at the greenhouse, like marigolds and zinnias, um, I would ask you to please plant those because when the monarchs are coming from Canada in the fall, a lot of our wildflowers are already, are, you know, already done and marigolds and zinnias last until the, until the really hard frost. You will get tons of butterflies if you have marigolds and zinnias in your yard. Thank you. 
So we've got more of the mowing discussion and I would invite everybody that's involved with that to look at the email list and the invitation. And you'll be able to contact, contact each other through there or I'm very happy to moderate um, that connection as well. Because I think most of you are in my email list. All right, any last questions regarding butterflies and butterfly habitat? Can, can I say something at the end? <laughs> yes, you sure can, please do. Okay, I just wanna thank everybody for coming today. And, you know, I've, I've just spent 10 years of my life, every day I can go out, you know, monitoring Oak Point. And you wouldn't believe all the things I've seen besides butterflies, I've seen a lot. One time a lady told me, get back in your car. And I'm like, uh, why? And she's like, we just saw a mountain lion here 10 minutes ago. You know, I mean, I, I've experienced a lot of things in this research. And I really do appreciate that everybody chimed in. And I'm looking forward to talking with people from the tribe and the mowers and that and just just go over it a little bit. So my heart isn't sad and I can know what's going on. And then I hope that when I'm going down the road one day that everybody will stay to their word and, and everything will be fine and these species can thrive on Oak Point. Well, please join me in thanking our speaker today. And uh, we are very, very glad to see all of you at our STEM Lunch and Learn. Um, please look for future ones. I think we will have two more yet this semester. So, Miigwech. Allison and me, you.